Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining uh, this week's uh, teleconference. As an update, um, we will have Commissioner Keith Gill at approximately about 10.40 uh, Central Time. We're now joined with uh, Coach Clark, the head coach of uh, App State. If you have a question for Coach Clark, please ask star one on your phone at this time. Again, star one to get in the queue. Coach, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with a opening statement? Yeah, first of all, congratulations to Coach Napier and his program on getting a win here uh, Friday night. So it was a good college football game. I wish we would come out on the other end of it, but we got to keep making mistakes and turnovers, and, and that's what's killing us right now. So we came in yesterday and put it to bed and turn our focus on Georgia Southern. Thank you very much, Coach. As a reminder to our members of the media, it's star one to get in the queue. Our first questions come from Dan McDonald with The Advocate. Please, please go ahead, Dan. Morning, Coach. Uh, how uh, how difficult will it be for your team to sort of turn the page this week? Uh, it won't be difficult. We're playing uh, one of our our arch rival. The guy goes. The team goes way back, and a team we have a lot of pro, uh, a lot of. Uh, 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 we will, Georgia Southern is a hell of a program. Coach Lumber's a great job. We got a lot of respect for him, and we got to turn the page very, very quick. We did on Sunday. Coach, if you can, I know you, your team made a lot of mistakes uh, in the Friday night game. Was there one particular area that you, you know, that you want to try to focus on? Well, there's a bunch of different areas. Uh, number one is turnovers. We had three and they had zero, and and that can't happen. And we were in the red zone three times and and only scored once out of the, uh, out of that. And then uh, their their offense rushed for 246 yards, and <clears throat> you can't do that versus a very good program and. And they capitalized on our mistakes, and that was the name of the game. How hard would it be to convert from the offense that you faced with Louisiana to go up against the uh, the unique type of offense that Georgia Southern comes in with? Well, I think it's two different style of offenses, but uh, one thing they have in common is they got a really good quarter. Both teams have really good quarterbacks and good running backs, and and um, and their offensive line at Georgia Southern is very good, just like uh, Lafayette's and. We got to turn the page a little more uh, assignment oriented this week, and we'll have our hands full. If, if you don't mind, I know that you still have the game left, but looking at that championship game, can you sort of contrast the difference in Coastal and Louisiana going into their game in a couple of weeks? Uh, two really good programs. That's why they want each one their side of the of the division, and it's going to be a great uh, game wherever it's played. And um, I look forward to watching it. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Coach. We do appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. If everyone can stand by, we'll place everyone on a brief hold here. We'll have Jamie Chadwell at 1037 um, a.m. here, and then we'll also, and he will be followed by uh, Commissioner uh, Keith Gill. So please uh, stand by, and we'll be back with uh, Jamie here shortly. All right, thank you for holding, everybody. We are now joined with uh, Jamie Chadwell, the head coach of Coastal Carolina. If you have a question for Coach, please dial star one on your phone at this time. Again, star one to get in the queue. Uh, coach, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with an uh, opening statement? Uh, we had a we had a great week, great weekend. Had a great win this past weekend versus a, a really good BYU team. I'll open up for questions. All right, thank you, Coach. Our uh, first questions come from Alan Blondin with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, you kind of uh, intimated uh, during the post-game press conference um, you weren't really pleased with having to play a game this week, uh, knowing that Louisiana has a week off and has two weeks to prepare for you. Um, is there anything you think that can be done uh, about you having to travel to Troy and play this game before the championship game? No, it's definitely a competitive advantage for them. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know how that makes sense for anybody, but uh, I guess we'll be on the bus this week going down there. But do you, is there anything you think can be done to change that, or what would you like to be changed, if, it, if anything? Uh, you know what? That's out of my pay grade. If uh, you know the championship game is a big deal, uh, but um, that's above my pay grade right now, so I, I can't make decisions on that. All right, coach. And um, you you know the real physical game, obviously with BYU. You guys come out of that with um, with any injury concerns that you didn't have prior to it. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have a few for sure. Uh, we'll have a few for sure because uh, we did get banged up. Don't know exactly how that's going to look. And then, obviously, with our fans rushing the field, I got a major concern. 
All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Alan. Our next question comes from uh, John with the Associated Press. Please go ahead, John. Uh, yeah, Coach. I know your your team's handled, you know, a lot of different circumstances well this season. But is there any concern with the sandwich game in between a big victory and and, a, and another big game coming up next week? Well, Troy's really Troy's really good, you know, and and uh, and so they're they, they're a good football program, and, and we'll have to play well to try to beat them, you know, because that's that's our thing. Is we don't play well, we can get beat by anybody. So. Uh, uh, we'll have to go play well and and uh, and then you know let Louisiana rest up for us in the next week. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, John. Our uh, next questions come uh, from, with uh, Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, Daniel, please go ahead. Hey, coach! Congratulations on the win. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, facing BYU and just ha- such a, such a great game, and looks like it could be a great rivalry. Do you see maybe? Um, maybe scheduling BYU maybe every year or every so year just so we can have more games like we saw on Saturday? Uh, not really. I mean, it was a great game, and I'm sure we'll have to play them again at some point. But, uh, you know, it, it's obviously great for college football, but from a recruiting standpoint, some of that doesn't really make a lot of sense, you know, because we're, we're not really recruiting that far out. So, um, you know, I, I don't see it becoming an annual thing by any means. Mm-hmm. And also I wanted to ask, what do you think this win against BYU, such a, a big school, ranked ranked in the top ten? What do you think this meant for the Sun Belt Conference and also Coastal Carolina, maybe towards the future? Uh, you know what? I don't know about the conference, uh, uh, but for us, it was a big deal, uh, and you know, mm-hmm. it, it able to showcase what we're capable of doing. Um, and uh, thankful to get the win, having game day here. It was a, it was a big deal, you know, and so hopefully it's something that. Uh, uh, we'll continue to allow our program to grow in the direction we want to go. Uh, last question I want to ask you. Um, I got to ask, did you get any, did you get one of those Mormons versus mullet shirts that they were selling that went viral or no? I didn't, you know, I, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I, I wish I'd have had time to, you know, I wish I'd have got in on it. Maybe I could have made a little extra money off of it. It looks like they're going like hotcakes right now. Thank you, coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Um, let's go to, um, Gabe McDonald with uh, WMBF News. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Um, I guess the main thing really is um, you speak a lot about, you know, the leaders on the team. To speak on their maturity and how they've been able to handle everything so far this season because now it seems like the attention is about to go through the roof even more after this past weekend's win. Well, Gabe, they they have. They've done a great job, and they've handled everything that's been thrown on. There's a lot, you know, that we've not been used to uh, this year that we've uh, been able to, uh, you know, experience. And if you didn't have great leadership, you know, that could have derailed you a long time ago. And, and our guys have been mature and handled everything. Just took it in stride, you know, and that's what you'd love to have. And sometimes you get nervous about that, but they've been great. And, because they've been through a lot of the down times, and they're doing the up times. They don't want it to leave All right, thank you, uh, Gabe. Um, and it looks like we have uh, one more follow-up here from Alan. Um, Alan, please go ahead. Yeah, Coach, thanks. Um, can you expound a little bit on uh, your concerns with the, the fans and uh, and uh, your players' interaction with them after the game? Well, there was a lot of excitement, you know, and, and uh, the guys, you know, some of the little game played, and, and our fans were excited, and, and some of them were able to get on the field, and, and so they're down there, and they're not part of your bubble and that. When you're not, that brings in some different things uh, uh, you know, to, to your bubble, the bubble you're trying to create. So uh, there's some, some concern there. We'll see how we'll see how things shake down. But I think that's a you know that's a concern going forward. We've done a good job up to this point, but um, but that was a unique situation circumstance on Saturday. So uh, hopefully we'll be okay. But I, you know, as a coach, you get nervous about that. And is your is your only testing this week Wednesday, or do you have anything uh, additional? Uh, it's Wednesday, uh, and it can be earlier if we have, you know, if anybody shows any symptoms or anything like that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Coach. Do appreciate your time today. Thank you. All right. If everyone can stand by, we'll have uh, Commissioner Keith Gill on here shortly. Please stand by. Thank you for holding everybody. We'll be back with uh, Commissioner Keith Gill here uh, very shortly. 
All right, thank you for holding everybody. We are now joined with uh, Commissioner Keith Gill. If you have a question for uh, Commissioner Gill, please dial star one on your phone at this time. Again, star one uh, to get in the queue. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off uh, with an opening statement? Thanks so much, Travis. Appreciate everyone um, being here and participating. Uh, I just want to say, obviously, this is, um, from a football standpoint, been a tremendous year for the Sun Belt Conference. Think about last weekend um, with having game day at Coastal Carolina. What an incredible atmosphere to showcase um, one of the premier um, programs in our league and one of the great institutions in our league. And then also to go out and um, play um, an incredible game um, against um, BYU. Um, so a great weekend, obviously, for Coastal and a great weekend for the, the Sun Belt. You know, started off with Louisiana um, having a really entertaining game with Appalachian State um, on, um, on Friday night. And I'm um, just kind of carried forward into um, a great weekend um, hosting College Game Day and then Coastal's um, great win over BYU. So um, Sun Belt football continues um, to showcase itself, and um, we just um, keep looking for opportunities to show um, the quality of our football and what a great football brand um, that we have in the Sun in the Sun Belt. Thank you very much. As a reminder to our members of the media, it's star one to get in the queue. Our uh, first questions come from uh, Dan McDonald with the Advocate. Please go ahead, Dan. Morning, Keith. Um, I know that you're obviously looking forward to the championship game on the 19th, but after that, you've got the bowl season, and I know that that's already you know there are some plans already being made. The eight ESPN-owned games. Do you have? Are you confident that all of those games will be played this year? Yeah, you know that's probably a good, better question for ESPN than it is for me. What I, what I would say is I'm confident in the five bowls that we have contracts for that 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 those bowls will be played in. So three of those are ESPN bowls, two other ones are independent, and um, and I feel really good that the five bowls that we are contracted with um, will go off as scheduled. What kind of challenges does playing having to back up the championship game to the 19th? Because, you know, the bowls, most of them are the following week that you have contracts with. And is there a scenario that one of the two teams in the championship game could turn around and be heading to New Orleans four days later? Yeah, so I, I think that I would say that the reality is the way we built our bowl schedule is um, there are three bowls that are on the 25th and between the 25th and the 26th. So Cure Bowl and Lending Tree Bowl are on the 26th. Camellia Bowl is on the 25th. We did that with intention to make sure that um, our champions, um, the teams that play in our championship game, have the opportunity to go to a bowl game with a week's rest. And um, or at least you know six days, I guess, in, in terms of December 25th. So I think that's going to give us flexibility to make sure that we can create the best matchups um, for the teams in our championship games in those bowls that will give them you know significant um, the significant rest. So the three games that you're involved in mostly are the Camellia, the Cure, and the uh, First Responder in Dallas. No, so our five primary bowls are Myrtle Beach. That's on December 21st. Um, the New Orleans Bowl on December 23rd, the Camellia Bowl on December 25th, the Cure Bowl on December 26th, and the Lending Tree Bowl on December 26th. So those are our five primary partners. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Dan. Our uh, next questions come from uh, Tim Buckley with The Advertiser. Please go ahead, Tim. Morning, Keith. Good morning. Um, do you, sticking with the bowl subject, do you anticipate it's likely that you will have to wait until after the championship game because of the possibility that, that your winner might get drawn to a, a quote-unquote bigger bowl than the five that you are contracted with? Or do you hope and anticipate it's a situation where you can establish that uh, much like you did in the past, uh, the winner will go to Bowl X? and the loser of the championship will go to bowl Y and you'll know that going into the title game. Yeah. So I, I don't know that we'll, I don't think that will be um, solidified. Oh, sorry. I feel like I'm hearing some feedback, so I apologize. Um, I, I don't think any of that will be necessarily solidified before the championship game. Um, obviously we've got great opportunity at a new year six and, and, and that's, 
what our aspirations are, and so we certainly never do anything to preclude that. And I think that will create, um, you know, some. Yeah, it, it just will cause us. We'll, we'll need to be patient. So, um, you know, if we can announce them, we certainly will as soon as we can. But, um, but you know, we've got a lot of good opportunities in front of us that are going to really force us to be patient as we um, kind of figure out what um, our full bowl scenario. There'll be some bowls that we will be able to kind of identify a little earlier. You know, hopefully like Myrtle Beach, that's on December 21st. And so you want to make sure that you're giving people at least, you know, a week to 10 days notice in terms of trying to let them know when they're going to play and who they're going to play. Um, but I don't know that we're going to have all of our bowls kind of identified just because we have so many great opportunities in front of us because of the great season that we're having. And last thing uh, from me, um, Coach Chadwell at Coastal just expressed some concern about uh, uh, them having to go play at Troy this week and the Cajuns having the week off before the championship game and said, and I'm paraphrasing but pretty close, that it gives them a competitive advantage. Um, uh, Do you anticipate the potential for any accommodation in that regard, or do you expect that Coastal will have to go play that game at Troy? You know, I, you know, we kind of, kind of, we we're just playing the schedule that's in front of us, you know, and so I, I, I think that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna play the schedule that is, that is in front of us and that is scheduled, and um, and so I would, you know, anticipate that that game is um, is gonna go on as scheduled. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tim. And our next questions come from Alan Blondin with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Hi, Keith. Um, Hello. The question I have, it's, it's, a, it's still it's a kind of a follow-up to the bowl. So I'm just trying to identify what Coastal Carolina's opportunities may be in the bowl season. So as of right now, based on your, your partnerships, um, it looks like their only opportunities are to get into a New Year's Six Bowl or play in one of your five contracted bowls. Is there, um, is there a chance that if they are um, – if they are sought after by larger bowls that aren't a New Year's Six Bowl um, that would put them against a Power Five opponent, um, would, would the conference be willing to tell their bowl partners that um, we're going to allow one of our schools to play outside of our contracted bowls? Um, and is that even a possibility um, with all bowl contracts uh, that exist? I know this year is so different. It looks like the bowl structure is kind of Topsy turvy, and it may allow Coastal to play in a game that it normally wouldn't get into. Yeah, so so I don't know that the bowl the the bowl structure is is it's it's all like contractually based. Um, it's a contractually based structure built on partnerships, and so I really do think that the the options that will be in front of us are trying to get to the New Year Six and playing that and or trying to play in our contracted bowls. So that's um, it's generally the way the system's set up. That's generally the way it's worked. And that's what I would anticipate that, you know, is going to be, um, you know, in front of all of our teams in the Sun Belt. Do you, and just as a follow-up that, do you, would, you, would you be disappointed if Coastal goes undefeated, say wins the, the conference championship, goes undefeated, um, and doesn't get into a New Year's Six and then has to play, you know, a Conference USA team or, you know, somebody that obviously wouldn't be the cachet that uh, they should have the opportunity to play as a team that might be ranked, you know, at that point, 10th, 11th, 12th in the country in the CFP. You know, I think we're working really hard so that Coastal can be our representative to the New Year's Six. And um, so we're excited about, you know, their resume um, in terms of, you know, having two – Great wins already, another really good win, Um, went over a Big 12 team. Um, So if you think about it, I mean, they have a strong case to make um, a New Year's Six Bowl. So that really is our focus, you know. And, you know, in in this term, I wouldn't call any opportunity to play a disappointment. You know, at the end of the day is if we get an opportunity to have um, access to a bowl, and, and play that game, I would say that that is a gift and something that we'll take very seriously and, and play as hard as we can to showcase our brand of football. So I don't think there is, are any disappointments out there, but we're really focused on the New Year's Six opportunity and um, certainly think that that is, um, is one that's in reach for Coastal. 
All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alan. And uh, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much for joining us today. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. And if everyone can stand by, I want to place everyone on a brief hold. We'll be back with uh, Chad Lunsford of Georgia Southern here shortly. Thank you. All right. Thank you for holding, everybody. We are now joined with uh, Chad Lunsford, the head coach of Georgia Southern. If you have a question for Coach, please dial star one on your phone at this time against star one to get in the queue. Uh, coach, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with an uh, opening statement? Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, uh, we, we were coming off two hard weeks of uh, losses, and uh, we had an opportunity to play at home and a good Florida Atlantic team. And um, our guys did a tremendous job, uh, especially after uh, dealing with a little bit of a coaching change and uh, going a different direction with our offensive coordinator. Um, thought our guys handled that really well. Our defense really played um, lights out, holding FAU to three points. Uh, special teams did a great job of getting a punt return for a touchdown, and uh, we were able to finish that game off 20-3 uh, to three and uh, definitely were able to get the bad taste out of our mouths from the two previous losses before. Um, obviously another big one this week, um, Sunbelt uh, Conference game uh, with our rival, App State, and uh, – you know, a lot of respect for their program and uh, what they do. And uh, obviously being at home, we're excited to play in front of our home crowd crowd, and uh, try to go get a W this week. All right, thank you, Coach. As a reminder to our members of the media, the star one to get in the queue. Our first questions come from uh, Dan McDonald with The Advocate. Let's go ahead, Dan. Morning, Coach. Good morning. Your, your guys, uh, I know you talked about the defense. Could you elaborate on them a little bit? I mean, you were plus four in turnovers in the game. And uh, obviously, the hold, you know, a pretty good offensive team to only three points. What what were some of the things that they did well? Well, I think the big piece is we challenged them to stop the run. And, uh, you know, they were able to hold them to a, um, 133 yards rushing. Uh, the four turnovers were huge. Um, you know, we felt like we should have had five. We kind of let one slip through our hands. Um, but we gave up zero touchdowns in the red zone, uh, which was big. Um, you know, four consecutive drives that ended with a turnover. Um, that that definitely changed that game. And, you know, third down defense was good. We were, you know, uh, we held them to two conversions out of ten attempts. And, um, you know, and then we were able to start the second half off good by causing a turnover with the third quarter. Um, and then there was a huge fourth and inches stop at midfield uh, that led to a field goal that put us up by three scores. And, um, you know, and then I really like our, our defense finish because um, that last drive FAU had, uh, we had two penalties, um, you know, one with a late hit on the quarterback and then a uh, pass interference, uh, but we were still able to uh, hold them to no points. And, um, you know, I just think that's a testament to our guys and, and the way they wanted to finish that football game. Has your defense gotten the uh... – the credit that they probably deserve this year. I mean, your offense obviously gets a lot of exposure for its uniqueness and so forth, but, you know, your defense has played well in a, in several games this year. Yeah. You know, um, I don't, I don't know if they've gotten the credit they deserve um, uh, because, you know, we've been in every football game um, and our defense has done a really good job of putting us in a position to, to uh, have the opportunity to win every football game. Um, you know, and, and another thing about it with our defense that I think uh, needs to be credited is uh, we've got a lot of next man up mentality going on with our defense, too. I mean, we've had to have some linebackers step up, nose guards step up, safety step up. Um, and that's, um, you know, that's a testament to what our defensive staff's doing and a testament to our players. So um, I, I think they deserve more credit than they get, but, but that's okay. I mean, um, our guys – you know, all our guys on our team, I mean, we always want to have that chip on our shoulder that we got to do more. And, and we understand that, um, you know, we're only as good as our next game. So uh, we got to put all of it behind us and, and try to go play our best game this week. One more quick question, if I can. Uh, well, I guess a two-part question. Is it a positive to be playing a rival at this point in the year when, you know, you're – obviously not in a position to try to get into the championship game or anything. How important is it to play a rival? And what about your, your squad as far as physically? Are some of the key guys going to be available that you might not have had the last couple of weeks? Well, um, you know, as far as the rivalry goes, I mean, the, the one with Appalachian has, um, 
you know, typically since we moved up to FBS, has been more mid-season Thursday night game. Um, you know, I think it's kind of neat to be able to play it at the end of the year and, and play it on a Saturday. Um, you know, I, I think that brings a little extra element to the rivalry game. Um, you know, uh, we enjoy those Thursday nights and, and being able to play on national TV and all that type of stuff. But um, I think it does bring a little extra element to it. Now, you know, I don't I don't know their situation as far as uh, their health or anything like that. But, you know, the, the, the tough parts when you get to the end of the season, you know, just being healthy uh, across the board. So, um, you know, that factors into it too. Um, you know, I think what you saw last week on defense is who you're going to get, you know, as far as our players go. Um, you know, we do hope to get, um, you know, a couple people back on defense. But, again, I think all that's going to end up being day-to-day and see how they look and how they feel. Uh, but I think what you saw last week is who you're going to get on the field. Appreciate it, Coach. Yep, no problem. All right, thank you, Dan. Our next questions come from um... – Nathan uh, Dominance with the Savannah Morning News. Please go ahead, Nathan. Hey, hey, Coach, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I guess real quick, um, now that a couple of days have passed, uh, what did you think of Justin Tomlin's performance uh, in handling uh, so much um, responsibility on Saturday? And also any updates on Shy Wirtz's condition day to day? Is there any positive news on that front? Thanks. Well, uh, let me start out with Shy. Um, we, did, we did not practice him last night. Um, we felt like it was best to give him another day. Um, and then, obviously, we're off on Mondays uh, with our whole team. Um, so that will give him a couple days. Uh, we're going to bring him in and reevaluate him on Tuesday um, and see if he can give it a go on Tuesday. Uh, so, really, the update's going to be I'll, I'll know a little bit more uh, once he does his treatment today and then once he does his treatment tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll have a better feel for that. But uh, as of yesterday, uh, did not feel confident putting him out there. Um, and then moving over to uh, JT, um, you know, after watching the game, um, there's some things that uh, he, he does need to clean up. we gotta, we got to do a better job with the ball security. I mean, we did not turn the ball over, but there were a couple balls on the ground. There was a, uh, a throw that could have been an interception, but the guy bobbled it as he went out of bounds. Um, so we got to do a good job with that. Um, the positives with JT, as I thought he was very poised uh, for his first start this season, um, I thought he did a really good job of handling the, the no-huddle stuff that we did, the, the tempo stuff that we did, the communication piece. Um, and then I think the biggest thing I'm proud of him is just how physical he played. Um, if you watch a little bit of his runs and stuff, I mean, he was trying to finish runs. Um, he was trying to bring an energy and a fire to our – offense of, of attacking and and I thought he showed that and I, I just thought he was really poised in in his part of the game okay thank you coach yep no problem all right thank you Nathan and uh, thank you coach that's all the time we have for you today we do appreciate it all right no problem thank y'all GATA thank you and we are now joined with Blake Anderson the head coach of Arkansas State if you have a question for coach Anderson please dial star one on your phone at this time get star one to get in the queue Coach, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with an opening statement? Sure. Um, you know, it's obviously good to be on the winning side of things. It's been a rough year, a uh, rough stretch. But uh, just proud of the guys, whether they've continued to fight and good to get a win uh, here at home. And, and we talked uh, you know, a couple weeks ago about just refocusing and starting the season you know, over. This is this was the first game of the 21 season in our mind with, with kind of where we've been and what we've been through. And, just wanted to want to improve and play play good ball in, in all three phases and, and, and find a way to, to be 1-0 and in the week. And guys did that, had a good week of work, carried it to the field, and, and really, for the most part, played with, with you know, with minimal mistakes. Um, so a lot of young guys got reps, which are huge, moving into the off season, uh We got out of the game relatively healthy, had a couple bumps and bruises, but – uh, and, and a couple, obviously, young guys had huge games for us, too, and just the, the kind of game that, that Corey Rucker was able to, to have in the absence of, of Jay Adams with his injury was, was just a tremendous lift. And Jefferson Foreman, another 100-yard-plus game, and a lot, of, a lot of really positive things to build on leading into our last game uh, here at home against the Incarnate Word. So proud of the guys' efforts, proud of the way they're working. Just want to keep, keep improving and, and get these guys into the offseason, get them healed up and healthy so we can uh, start fresh next fall. Thank you, Coach. Our first questions come from uh, Dan McDonald, the advocate. Please go ahead, Dan. 
Morning, Blake. Morning. Uh, could you explain a little bit more about Corey Rucker? I mean, I know y'all have seen, you know, probably you've watched him in practice and in games all year long, but to have a breakout performance like that, I mean, how big was that for your bunch? Well, considering that, you know, what Jay Adams has done for the team and, and just the season he's had and just how much you rely on on what he's able to do to ask a freshman to go out and fill those shoes, that's just not something everybody's able to step up to and, and do. Um, not to mention, you know, to have the kind of game Corey had. And he's had some big plays throughout the course of the year and, and you know, scored and, and made plays and, and really made critical plays in, in some games. But, um I, you know, he exceeded everybody's expectations to go out and play basically a flawless game and, and just make play after play after play. And he's obviously got a lot of time still left ahead of him. Encourage to know that uh, we've got, you know, we we evaluated well and we we got the right guy, and, and he's gonna he's just gonna only gonna get better. You had a lot of success in the passing game. How good was that for you to see? Well, it's good considering how they played us. I mean, they they loaded the box and played man coverage, and and when you don't just assume that you're going to go out and beat people in man coverage, especially when you're talking about guys that did not, you know, play most of the season as starters. You know, Jefferson has played a good bit, but but really just significantly over the last few weeks, he had injury, he dealt with COVID, and uh, and and took him a while to get to where he felt like himself. And you've seen him the last few weeks, but Corey, true freshman that's had minimal snaps. Uh, to go out and have the game he had, you you have to uh, you have to go out and execute on Saturday, and and they were they were bringing pressure, bringing bodies, trying to make it hard to run the ball, trying to get to the quarterback, and our ability to win in one on one situations and throw and catch like we did broke the game wide open. If not, it would have been a very long, frustrating day. You talked about already starting the 2021 season. Uh, is is there a any any concern that you are playing a non conference game, last game of the year and so forth, that your your guys might be almost too much looking ahead to twenty twenty one? I don't think so. With all we've been through this year and, and just how hard wins have been able to you know, to, to come by and, and you know, just how high and excited we were coming out of the first two games with expectations of of competing for a title and and, and being just kinda crushed by COVID, I mean, I, I think just the ability to play at home with your friends and your teammates, the guys you care about, and and to finish off 2-0, and oh, I can't imagine it matters who we're playing. It's just the opportunity that we get to play and, and an opportunity to get to 5-7. Uh, and seven. I mean, they've been through a lot. We don't take anything for granted. Any win is a great win at this point. We appreciate the opportunity to play and the opportunity to win more now than maybe we ever have, considering what what we've built, been through this particular season. One more quick question, if I could. Same type subject. You're going to be one of the few teams in the country that's going to play 12 regular season games. What does that say for your program and, and what y'all have done to, to sort of fight off the virus? Well, it, it won for a good bit of the year, to be honest with you. I mean, we, we had a really good football team. I think everybody saw that when we went to K-State and beat those guys there at their place and what kind of team they carried through the year. But, uh, you know, COVID did win a lot. We, we we lost some games that I think we were more than capable of winning had we been completely healthy. <clears throat> but we never gave in completely. Our guys have continued to play hard. There will be uh, just a few teams that get to 12. It just shows the toughness and resiliency of this group and just how much they actually care about playing. Because we, we had just a couple guys opt out. That's it. Most of these guys were all in for the whole season. A lot of them played through injury. A lot of these guys – lost five to ten pounds during the COVID issue and have struggled to get back to feeling like they did before, but they've continued to come out here and give us all they got. And, and you know, I tell the fans, I know the record's not what we want, but these guys have been more through more than you can possibly imagine and, and really deserve you know, our appreciation and our respect for for what they've done. This is uh, – it's been unlike anything that we've physically. It's been unlike anything we've dealt with before in my career, and these guys have battled. I, I love them to death, and really proud of them. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dan. Our next questions come from uh, Dennis Doff with CBS Sports. Please go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Blake. Um, I was kind of tailing hey, off that last question. Was there ever a time after that Kansas State game where you guys were 100 percent, where somebody wasn't dealing? With something, did you ever get to that point? Uh, you know, I would say that that we got to the point. I think here over the last few weeks, where we weren't 
we weren't worried about a bunch of guys testing positive. What we what we what we've continued to have to deal with, though, Dennis, is just the the lasting fatigue and lack of strength yeah. and power that we lost. Uh, I don't really think these guys will get back to to where they were before until we truly get some rest in the holidays and get into a true off season. Just the body weight that we lost, the power and strength that we lost mid season. That's just not something you're able to recover. And we're at a place like where we're at, just the way these guys are built. You know, we 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 kind of survive on quickness and speed and and what little bit of power we 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 had going in, we we definitely lost. And you've seen it, you've seen that on the field in some games where we we desperately needed it and, and just didn't didn't have that to to grab a hold of and, and finish with. Is, is that something you know as a coach? you didn't know about they don't tell you about because you, you wouldn't be the only coach going through that because this, this thing runs through your body and leaves yeah you. no doubt no yeah. doubt and, and i and i and i had it and feel it personally so i, I think i've got yeah. a reference point that some don't i mean I, I i'm a guy that's in good shape i work out five six days a week i've seen the toll it's taken on my body and my endurance and my cardio and the things that that i need just to work out not to mention these guys to be able to play at a high level we didn't know what we didn't know. I mean, we 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 had a great plan from June till September when we played the game. We'd had just a couple guys test positive, nobody symptomatic at all. And then when we started the traveling process and getting on buses and planes, I mean, it literally it just ravaged our team over the next month. And we didn't know what that would look like. And we've learned that, and I think we'd have a we'd have a much different plan, you know, going into a season. Now we would obviously really, really focus on nutrition and, and rest and recovery during the quarantine process even more um, deliberately than we did. The travel measures that we ended up taking and changing and sharing with other programs throughout the country to try to help them not go through what we went through. I mean, we've learned a lot the hard way, unfortunately, but. Yeah, you know, I'm really proud. Our guys are safe. They're, they're they'll get you know they'll get recovered in the off season. It, you know the season took a hit, but we we played and we're going to get them all in. Uh, but uh, but definitely, you know if this is something that's around in the future. We learned a lot and learned a lot by you know just you know having to go through it. Also, if I could squeeze in one more, in the middle of this, you got signing day next week. During a pandemic, when you haven't been able to meet guys face to face since March. How's that going to work, especially with roster churn coming up and, and everything? Yeah, you know, it's been a ton of virtual time with these guys, virtual tours, Zoom, FaceTime, home visits, uh, talking to them every day. It's it's not the same as being in the house with them or, or going to see them, there's no doubt. But we're fortunate that technology has allowed us to feel like we're in the same room with them. We may maybe have spent more time face-to-face with them than ever before, albeit over a screen. So I feel good that we know who we're getting. I think I feel good about them knowing who we are, uh, with the exception of actually stepping foot on campus or stepping foot, you know, in their front front door. Uh, beyond that, I think we've taken and used the technology till its fullest, and, and everybody is still trying to stay as connected as possible so that guys make good decisions. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. All right. All right, thank you, Dennis. And we have time for uh, one more with uh, Daniel uh, Rodriguez. So please go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Coach. Uh, congratulations thank on the win this week. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, going up against Incarnate Word, what it means maybe to face a team that hasn't played all year and this is, you know, their shot to go up against an, an FBS team and, and maybe how the guys uh, on the team are getting prepared to face them. Well, the guys are, are, are like we talked earlier, just trying to get to one and zero this week. Finish up this season on on two positive notes with wins. Uh, we don't know much about them. I mean, we we're, we don't have any games on them this year. I know Eric does a great job with them, and you know, won a conference title a couple years ago. And and, and again, is is uh, his offensive background speaks for itself. Uh, it's it's dangerous. You don't know exactly what to expect. Uh, I know they. This is a great opportunity for them to find out what they're made of going into their season in the in the spring, but at the same time, you you have there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, this is going to be a different team than what we saw on their film from last year. Uh, so so we just got to we got to do a great job of just going out and playing our best ball and, and hoping that uh, 
that if, if we do that, that'll be enough to uh, to finish off with a win. They're more than capable of coming in here and beating us if we don't play our game. If we turn the ball over and, and don't play with great energy, uh, they're well coached, and, and, uh, and so we're gonna, we're going to have to play. We're going to play good football. Thank you, coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Daniel, and thank you, Coach. Sorry we went a little long today. Appreciate your time. Uh, that's all right. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, if everyone can stand by, we'll be back with Billy Napier of Louisiana here in about two minutes. Please stand by. All right, thank you for holding, everybody. We're now joined with Billy Napier, the head coach of Louisiana. If you have a question for Coach, please dial star 1 on your phone at this time against star 1 to get in the queue. Coach, thank you for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with an opening statement? Uh Quality win on the road against a really good uh, football team in App State. We've got a lot of respect for their program, the tradition, the history there. Um, certainly, to come back from behind for the sixth time this year, I thought the kids showed a lot of resolve to go win in a very uh, tough place to play and some uh, really tough conditions to play. Uh, proud of the staff. Um, for the adjustments, thought we had good plans and, and you know, battled our way through the conditions uh, and, uh, you know, excited about the opportunities in front of, in front of us here uh, and the challenges going forward. Uh, look forward to getting to work this week um, uh, in prep for the conference championship game. Thank you very much. Our uh, first questions come from uh, Dennis Dodd with CBS Sports. Please go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Billy. Congratulations on that. Um, I was thinking ahead to next week for signing day. Not only you, but a lot of coaches. In the middle of a pandemic, you haven't been able to see these players since at least March. You're prepping for a for a championship game and a bowl game after that. How's that going to work? I mean, how hard is this right now? Yeah, no, I think there's a number of challenges that come with it. Uh, we just broke a personnel meeting, um, not only to evaluate the current class, but also our current roster. Um, you know, I think that this dynamic is uh, changing. You know, I think there's another way to acquire players, and that's through the transfer portal, portal much like yeah. free agency in the National Football League. So there's a lot of variables. Uh, I do think it's been challenging to evaluate um, the players, not having seen them in person, uh, not having all the dimensions, uh, not having verified speed on a lot of guys. Um, I think you miss out on the live evaluation, uh, being able to watch them play, being able to work with them in camp, coach them in camp. Uh, And I also think that there's something to be said for looking somebody in the eye, you know, sitting down with them in your office, sitting down with them in your home uh, to get a lot uh, lot better feel for who they are as people, not only the young man, but his family as well. So uh, I think you're right. I think there's, it is a challenge. Um, I do think that we've been very thorough and very, um, you know, diligent uh, with our staff. I'm very pleased with where we're at. And uh, we're we're working hard to try to finish strong and make really uh, good, informed decisions going forward about the players we do acquire. Are you recruiting to, you know, the the point there may be one-time transfers? And if so, when do you think that would take effect? Because I'm not sure on either of those points. You know, the the information that we have is we feel like it'll be voted on right. um, this spring and then it'll be um, official August 1. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much the consensus out there across the board uh, from the people that we talk to. Uh, but I, I'm with you. You know, I've been yeah. um, trying to ask as many people as I can about what they think the direction that we're headed, you know. Um, but I, I do think that you, if that's the case, then you do have to view it much like you would if you were um, in the National Football League. It's a different way to acquire a player. Um, so, you know, I'm with you. I think there's lots yeah, of questions yeah. around that topic for sure. Like, I guess my question is, you know, guys that you – are you leaving roster spots open for that August 1st? Um, implementation. I guess that's what we're talking about here for, for, for possible transfers. 
Well, I think um, every team's in a little bit different situation, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're in our third year. We're getting ready to go into our fourth year here. Um, I think each team's roster is a little bit different. You know, each team has a certain number of initials available. Each team has their own 85 problem and their own hard cap 25 problem. So it's all a big math problem. And uh, I think you got to make decisions uh, relative to that. Um, you know, I, I don't think it'd be wise for me to right. specifically talk about our current strategy, but I, I do think it's a good question um, and something that, you know, we have a lot of conversations about around here. Good. Thanks, Billy. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Our next questions come from Alan Blonin with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Hey, Coach. Um, Jamie Chadwell um, expressed some disappointment that his team – has to go play at Troy this week while um, you guys have the bye and you know have a couple of weeks to prepare for that championship game. And I guess just how much of an advantage do you think that might be for you? And do you think there's anything that should or could or should be done um, about Coastal having to play this game in between? Uh, well, um, you know, it's not it's something that I don't control. Um, you know, it was not my decision. Um, and certainly, you know, I think my job is to be the head coach at Louisiana and, and um, come up with the best plan uh, for our entire organization uh, to prepare uh, for the challenges that are in front of us. So uh, it just happened to be the case. Um, I know I would be probably feel the same way Jamie did if I was on the other side of the coin, um, and I can respect that, but um, you know, our job is to get our team ready to play, uh, and we, we're we going to do that. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Coach. do appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, uh, actually, we do have uh, Chip Lindsay on the line now, so we're now joining Chip Lindsay, the head coach of Troy. If you have a question for Coach, please dial star one on your phone at this time. Again, star one to get in the queue. Uh, Coach, thank you very much for joining us today. Would you mind starting us off with an opening statement? Sure. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, um, you know, obviously had a big win on Saturday and a big rivalry game, uh, battle for the belt against South Alabama. Um, Really, really exciting for us because, uh, you know, getting a lot of our team back together, I think for the first time in over a month, we we got everybody back. So that's, that's an awesome feeling. We had a really you know, a rough go there for three or four weeks with COVID, but that's part of it. And uh, really our guys responded last week with a great week of practice. I think that's what led to our better play on Saturday. And uh, I thought it was a solid effort all the way around, all three phases. Uh, Offensively, we didn't turn the ball over with the exception of one on a little trick play that that, uh, they picked off. But we played really solid football, was able to run it some, as well as be really efficient at the quarterback spot. Defensively, uh, we stoned their uh, running game and – Really, really kind of uh, dominated the line of scrimmage and tackled well in space and got back to playing good, good Troy defense and special teams was solid. So I thought it was a, overall a, a really solid team win. I thought all three phases could played off each other and contributed, and uh, hopefully that's going to be uh, a really good momentum for us as we head down the last the last two games here in this in this end of the year stretch. And uh, looking forward to the opportunity to play a really good Coastal Carolina team, having one of those magical years. Uh, they got a really solid team, very, very sound all the way around. Um, and uh, it would be a big challenge, but it's, it's exciting to get this opportunity to play at home, play a, you know, a top 15 opponent, whatever. I think they're ranked 11th or something. So uh, our players are excited, looking forward to it, and uh, need to have a good, solid week of practice again. Questions? All right. Thank you, Coach. Our first questions come from uh, Dan McDonald with The Advocate. Please go ahead, Dan. Morning, Coach. Could you talk a little bit about uh, Gunner Gunner Watson's performance? Uh, you know, coming back and I mean, looking sort of like you you found the Michelin Man pads to put on him. But talk about his performance, and I'm sure probably you know having to go through some pain all during that. Yeah, you know, he's a tough guy. I tell you, I've been you know so impressed with how he's handled this this situation with him. Um, really pleased with his decision making on Saturday. He did a great job of. Uh, you know, taking what they gave us and, and really ran the offense very, very uh, efficiently. Uh, you know, obviously this time of year, nobody's totally healthy, but for him, he's fought through a couple 
couple things, especially from a quarterback position, that make it really hard. And uh, he's a tough guy, and uh, that's why he's well-respected on our team. And uh, he knows he's probably not ever going to be healthy until the season's over but uh, and get some time off. But really pleased with how he played on Saturday. Again, I thought he made great decisions. I thought he took what they gave us. And, uh, you know, our, our team fed off of him and uh, excited to see him play well. You're playing a team, or you were playing a team last Saturday with a, with a lot of offensive playmakers and kept them out of the red zone the whole game, not just the, the shutout. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that defensive performance? Yeah, I was really, really pleased with that. I thought our front really dominated the line of scrimmage, and I think that's kind of where it started. And then, you know, I think Brandon Hall, our defensive coordinator, and, and that side of the ball, they had a great plan. And, and you know, it's, it's always good to have a great plan, but it's, you always have to execute that plan. And, I thought we did a great job of recognizing where Jalen Tolbert was, who's a really, really good wide out they have, and trying to make sure we always accounted for him and uh, limit his opportunities down the field. And I thought we did a nice job of that. But the best thing I saw after watching the film was we ran to the ball and we played with a lot of uh, – with a sense of urgency and a lot of excitement. And, uh, you know, really this year, man, we've, we've made a lot of progress on that side of the ball. And, uh, you know, the good thing is we got a lot of them back because we're a young team, and uh, I'm I'm excited about that group growing as a unit. Is there something positive you can take out of that time that you had so many guys, you know, that had to be sidelined, and, and now perhaps, you know, you've got this three-game stretch at the end of the year where where they can be pretty fresh and maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit better off than if they'd gone through the grind of all those games? You know, that's that's a great point. I, I do think our energy level for for the amount of weeks that we've been going at this is pretty good. And, you know, for instance, Kamani Vidal, our running back, came back. Well, he had not played in really three weeks, and and uh, uh, he had fresh legs and looked good and was very healthy. Uh, you know, you never want to go through kind of the, the, the deal we did. COVID-19 is a very serious thing. And, um, you know, myself having gone through it now, I got a ton of respect for the players trying to get back because it, it it's going to affect you if you have symptoms. And you know, we had we do have some asymptomatic people or did have during that time, but we had a lot that did have symptoms. And uh, I couldn't imagine trying to prepare and get ready to come back and practice and play a game. You know, coming off that if you felt bad. So I got a new respect for it for sure. But the one thing I know is our team continued to fight our. You know, obviously, you know, inside the program, you, you, you kind of got an idea of what's going on, and people from the outside really don't. But our team never flinched, and we stayed together and kept grinding every day and next man up mentality. And that's the way we decided we were going to approach this entire year. And uh, when you decide you're going you're going to play 12 games, you're going to have some bumps like that, and we have. But uh, it's part of it, and uh, now we're looking forward to this opportunity. So one particular area of coastal that impresses you more than I mean, a lot, obviously they have a lot of places that are impressive. Yeah, I would say the, from a defensive standpoint, their D line is is phenomenal. They got the best D line in our league, I think. Um, uh, I, they're big, they're big guys, but they're very athletic. You know, several of them were there last year, but they've added a piece or two to the puzzle that's made them even that much better. Um, I think their their quarterback on offense is a difference maker for them for sure from last year. And, and their coaches have done a really nice job of, of putting those guys in great positions. And, you know, once you get a, a team believing and, and having some success and things seem to go their way most of the time, they create a lot of their own uh, luck, so to speak. But uh, they, they're just a really solid football team and playing at a high level. And uh, it's, it's going to be one of those games where we're going to have to play extremely well. And the good thing is we're getting here to play. We're getting a chance to play at home. And uh, we're looking forward to it. It's exciting to get a good football team coming in like this. Appreciate it, Coach. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. And then we have time for one more uh, with um, from Alan Blonde with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Good. Hi, right, Coach. Do you know if um, a team ranked 11th is the highest that's uh, ever come to Troy? I wouldn't know. Um, and uh, just what you know, what would a win over Coastal mean? You guys are back to 500. Uh, you know, you got the, yeah. the game against OM left. Uh, just how 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 could this be a season changer for you? Yeah, you know what? That's a great. I don't know about the ranking stuff, so I, I'm not sure. Be honest with you, don't pay a whole lot of attention to that stuff uh, each week. But that'd be something our SID, I'm sure, would know. But I, um, you know, for us, I think this is, uh, you know, getting back to playing good football is what we're excited about, and you know, the opportunity to play Coastal, uh, who, who obviously is having a special year, and you know, you get a chance to play a good football team and get a big win. It'd be awesome. It'd be a, definitely a shot in the arm for us to finish the season out the right way. 
uh, and hopefully get in some postseason play. So uh, I think that's what our guys are kind of excited about when when you're when you're playing a team who's especially these guys who are undefeated. I mean, you know what a, what a great measuring stick be able to line up and play and lay it all out there and see what happens. But we got a lot of respect for them. They do it. They're doing a great job. And you know we played them last year in a tight game, 36-35 out there. I think they scored the last play of the game basically to beat us and. Um, so, you know, for us, we understand the challenge, but it's also going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, coach. That's, uh, that's all the questions we have for you today. I do appreciate your time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And that will conclude this week's teleconference. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. A copy of this will be posted on the Sunbelt Conference website and YouTube pages later today. Thank you for joining us. We hope everybody has a great week and safe travels for those of you on the road. Thank you. 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 Thank you.